Hey there, everyone. I hope you are all doing good. Stasma here. Today, I'm here to talk to you about Procyon by Eon, built by the Glasgow Synth Guild, who are actually sponsoring this episode because they are the one who sent me Procyon as well as the hook tone sequencer that you can see over here. Today is going to be a demo of Procyon. It is a dual filter, mostly made for stereo purposes. I'm going to take the left input and left output, so we are just going to start in mono right now. So as you can hear, it's not clean at all. This is as much a distortion unit as it is a filter. If you want to just hear the filter, you can start by using the pre-position. Because the first thing in line when you plug your input is a VCA. You can choose that VCA to be either in post, after the filter, which is what happens right now, it can get into a pretty dense saturation, I'd say. And in pre-mode, saturation is a bit different. And the pre-mode is actually the best if you want to just hear the filter. Here is the main frequency control. Part here is the resonance. This is an attenuator for the CV input. It's normal to a 5 volt offset, so it acts as some sort of a fine tune setting if there's nothing plugged into it. You can hear that it has some sort of a nasty character that's uh, inherited from the MS-20 because this is based on the MS-20 design. So in pre-mode, the less gain you put, the more resonance you will have. With more gain, as you can hear, there's less resonance. In post mode, you will distort the resonance. You can have pretty nasty sounds. Okay, let's go for the stereo. If you want to send one mono signal to the stereo input, this is not normal directly like most stereo filter because you can also use this as a dual mono filter with the two filter core in series, which we'll see later in the video. In the box, you have one of these that is meant to be used to send one signal to both input at once. So the ways you can interact with the Stereo is by using either this morph control, which basically with this with the um, switch down like I am right now, will 
change the filter type. It basically it's a morphing part that morphs between low pass and high pass. So you can have some sort of in between. And this will do that for the both filter at once. Let's set that to the middle. Now if I switch to the upper position, this will change both filter to the left and right in opposite directions. So right now I have one low pass and one high pass. And now the opposite. This is pretty cool to modulate. The CV is going to be added to the position of the part. I'm sending a LFO from, uh, from the mod Medusa that you can see right now. And then there's the spread control. The spread control will change the relative frequency of the filter. Spread control has also a switch. So if you are in the up position, you will offset the frequency of both filters in opposite direction. Once again, very easy to get lots of stereo animation from this. The center has a detent for zero, and it becomes an attenuator, attenuverter, actually, for the CV that you plug into it. If you send a control to the VCA, the volume part becomes the control. Set it to post, so we don't have that resonance. The CV you sent to the VCA is normal to the frequency control. It's also an attenuator, so you can invert it. Back a little bit of delay, a little bit. It's too much, but they don't care. There's also a 1 volt proactive input. If you want filter tracking. Filter does self oscillate, so it's quite easy to just not put anything into it and get lots of weird bleepy sine wave. Weird stuff. <laughs> to be said that it's always dirty. No matter what you do, this will always dirtify your signal. This is to be taken into account, but this is also one of the things that makes this module great. It does sound driven and gnarly and not cool, but in a cool way. <laughs> it can just be used as a stereo distortion VCA, basically, and be good. As this is intended as a stereo filter, let's go for a stereo patch. I'm using the cosaw and so output of the tree body with the phase modulated by both outer oscillator for something quite rich and already with a lot of stereo content. <laughs> Let's sweep that low pass. So let's give some life to this.
Some interesting stuff to do with this. Whatever CV you send to the VCA is automatically patched to the CV input of the filter in order to make it easy to control both the dynamic, the volume of the sound and its frequency content. The classic subtractive voice would be like this. VCA, post filter, and the same CV controlled both the VCA and the frequency cutoff. Oh yeah, this is good. We still have a uh, one volt per octave input. Yeah, that can be used either to add filter tracking, for example, sending a signal that is basically the same that's controlling the oscillator, but also just use it as a secondary modulation input, but you just need an attenuator before. Yeah, I made an LFO with one of the boundary and used the VCA section to attenuate it. Let's go back to the pre-mode. Just so I can show you something that's pretty fun with the resonance. You can make the filter itself oscillate. You can actually tune the two filters together to get some sort of a stereo sine wave oscillator. The VCA in post, you get a full voice. actually sound quite good. Here is a quick test running external audio stereo out from the analog rhythm directly into Procyon, gain at max, and it actually works. And then you can filter it on top. I've clocked the octone with an impulse machine of the analog rhythm so we can modulate parameters here directly with it. Dirty. some pretty nice sweet spot with this kind of drum patterns. Pretty fun to remix drum patterns you've already written. Yeah, as I'm not using the VCA, changing the pre or post just change the color. Try it better with pre.
almost create some sort of a melody on top of your signal. Okay, so one of the other type of patch that you might want to do with Procyon, if you are not necessarily into stereo thing, is to use it as a dual mono filter. And to help you doing that, there is one clever normalization. That is, if you send something to the left input, which is arguably input number one, let's say we take the left output, we have our signal being filtered by one of the filter. With all the classic things you can see there. The interesting part is that filter Number one, the left filter is automatically sent to the right input. So now if we take that right output, we have the two filter core in series. Which results in a little steeper uh, slope, uh, 24 dB slopes, because each of these filters are uh, 12 dB per octave. But if you engage the cross morphing type, it means that we now run one in low pass into the next one in high pass. The spread control becoming the width of the pen pass. One of the interesting things to note is that it doesn't sound the same at all if you completely invert the thing. Meaning now it's high pass into low pass. What is the difference? The in between more settings will give us some weird phasery sound. So, as an example patch. I have one envelope being triggered by the 880. With a slightly crunched sound from the drum machine itself. So here, with the control of the gain, we control the overall crunchiness of the filter. Here we control both of the filter peaks at the same time. Let's send a stepped pattern to the spread control. S20 squelch.
resonance when there's no uh, signal at the input. Very techno-ish, weird, very electro-techno-ish weirdness. Back to the single envelope thing. Back to post mode. Long stuff. I like to invert the envelope. some sort of pseudo timbral sidechain thing. Interface, uh, very reminiscent actually, but a bit bigger of the Triton Modular MS22. It allows for very quick and dramatic changes to a patch. Because each changes will affect both filters. Just to give it a go, here is a very fun patch that Noah shared on the presentation video of Procyon, which is actually using it to twist sine waves. Usually you don't put sine waves into filters because there's nothing to filter, because they have no harmonics. But using the nonlinear feedback path of the module, we can actually create harmonics on top of a non-harmonic signal, such as a sine wave, and it sounds like this. Pretty cool, right? 
if I remove the modulation. This is what we have, just so far, basically just sine wave with a little, little bit of saturation. We can increase that saturation with the VCA. Adding in the Q resonance and playing around with the frequency does give that sine wave some spikes around the zero crossing point, which sounds a little bit like nasty wave folding. So here is a little bit of envelope on this, on the filter frequency. Bit of envelope on the resonance control. Some beats, same drum patterns than a little bit earlier. One of the little secret sauce thing is that if you send the same sequence, the one volt per octave input, you will have that uh, sound that is going to track. Well, here, the sequence is coming from one of the nibbler, which means it is not one volt per octave calibrated at all. Tuned by ear on the FM parts of the tree body, so I've just roughly done something that resembles pitch tracking of this effect. But it does sound pretty good. I really like the sound of this. set to pre, we get those <laughs> screaming things that are quite fun. This does make me want to try to send a little bit of audio modulation to the spread just for fun. Many thanks to Glasgow Synth Guild and Eon for providing me the Procyon to try, as well as the Octone. You can find some affiliate links in the description where you can buy some of this stuff to support the channel if you want. And you can go have a look at my Patreon, where you will find some samples out of this session and a lot of other samples, and where you can also maybe order some new videos or get some teaching session with me if you need or want to. Thanks 
See you next time. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.